And by the way, this suddenly then makes sense of all the paradoxes of quantum theory, like the, the uh, wave-particle duality. So, you know this, the double-slit experiment? Yes. Why would it be the case that only if you turn on a detector, meaning that there's a person observing the experiment, right. even if you observe, observation means checking the data that was recorded later, Yes. it's still observation. Yes. Why would it be the case that only when you turn on the detector or you make an observation do you get a particle with a distinct location, and before that it's a wave form, meaning it's a probability distribution of something that could be a particle. Mm -hmm. In computer science, they call that rendering op optimization. It's used in video games all the time. Yeah. Things that aren't being looked at aren't rendered. It conserves processing power. Right. Yeah, but the dark matter around the galaxies, the one that we have physically observed through all these different observational mechanisms, telescopes and so forth, it's a computational cloud. All right, the old quantum mechanics thing. So it's very easy to exploit people's misunderstanding of quantum mechanics because nobody understands quantum mechanics. It's, it's very counterintuitive. It doesn't fit the world in which we live in. Uh, but there's, we, can, we understand enough to say that this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, right? So first of all, he's exploiting a very common misconception, the idea that the, you know, the wave-particle duality, that Part, you know, at the fund of fundamental quantum level, particles are just probability waves until they're observed. The thing is, it's not when they're observed. That's actually a misconception. It's when they interact with the environment, when they interact with something else. It doesn't matter if they're observed or not, that whether a human or an experimenter or an intelligence or whatever observes them. It just matters that they are interacting with other particles in the environment. So with the double slit experiment, you're sending photons to through two, you know, close thin slits. Uh, and so if the if the photon were a particle as it's traveling, it would only go through one slit at a time. And so you should have just two piles of photons hitting the detectors on the other side. But that's not how the world works, right? So as they're traveling as a wave, so you get a wave interference pattern appearing on the detector behind the two slits. This happens even if you turn down the brightness of the beam of light so that only one photon is passing through the detector at a time. So it's not that the particles are necessarily even interfering with each other. Each particle is a wave. You know, it's like a wave on, on the surface of the ocean. Um, you know, again, very counterintuitive. I get it. But people have, you know, cranks and pseudoscientists and people with fringe theories have been trying to go from there needs to be an observer to all kinds of things. The universe is conscious. Or in this one, the whole rendering thing, rendering optimization, it's not there until you look at it. It's like, oh, if nobody's looking at the moon, I mean, the moon's not there until somebody looks at it. Um, it's conserving computational power by not actually having a position until, you know, it interacts with something, until it's observed. Utter nonsense. Um, I always like to, again, ask of these kind of fringe theories, like, okay, so you have this hand wavy thing you completely made up, basically that you think explains reality. How can we test this? How can we prove it wrong? How can we distinguish this from other theories? Uh, if you can't come up with that, then you have nothing. You basically have nothing. Uh, this guy just has a, you know, a sexy sounding, you know, science fiction-y kind of theory that misinterprets what we do know about quantum mechanics and is not necessary and he, hasn't, he has no evidence to show that this is actually the case. Uh, this is just, I guess it's good podcast fodder, but it's not good science.